When we're setting up an experiment, scientists often run things in triplicate. So we have three samples. And you might be asking why three? It's not because we're superstitious and like lucky number three. No, instead it's so that we can spot errors and kind of tell which value might be correct. Let me explain. If we only have a single replicate, so we have one sample, and we go and we measure it, and we get some value, we have absolutely no idea if we can trust this value. It could be an outlier, it could be right, but we don't know. Okay, so two. Two sounds reasonable, right? Okay, we, we run two samples. Now we get two very different numbers. If we average them, we get the middle of between them, but that average could be super duper wrong, and we have no idea which of these is correct because we only have two points. What do we do? Well, you should have run triplicate, at least triplicate. So if you had run triplicate, or now if you're redoing your experiment because you didn't run triplicate, now what you can do is that you should have your values start to cluster near the one that's actually right. And so basically now you can say, okay, well, two of these values are like this one and this one is like off. So the average is gonna start getting closer to the real one. And you can say, well, wait, something might've gone wrong in this one sample and these are probably more trustworthy. But if you really want to be sure, well, now you need to do even more samples. And the more samples you do, the more kind of confident you can be that your answer, that that like, um, that is kind of like the cluster of ones that are close together are actually right. Now, all this is assuming that these samples are kind of have some independence from one another. And so there are different types of replicates, like biological replicates, like where you have different whole different samples, and then like technical replicates where you're basically measuring the same thing multiple times. If you're doing technical replicates and stuff, well then what can happen is that you have the same source of error in all of those samples, say. And so if you did experiments on two different days and you did like one experiment on one day and then like five on another day, the five on that other day might cluster together apart from the one on the other day. And that wouldn't really be telling you confidently that the five you did on that one day were correct. It could be that you did all of those wrong. Um, and so that's why it was really best is to do the same experiment on like multiple days and replicates in each of those days. Then you can spot error in that day and between the days. When you have a lot of samples too, you can start to do things like statistical analysis tests where you need to have a larger sample size in order to kind of power the statistical significance. Um, and so there are also sorts of like calculations you can do to figure out what your sample size needs to be in order to do statistical tests and get kind of like values that you can trust, but always be on the lookout for error. And when you're doing that startup, setting up an experiment, um, it can be really tempting to just do a single replicate because it's easy, but it, if you only do a single replicate, you have no idea if it's right. You do two, you still don't know if it's right if you get two different values. Really doing three is going to be kind of like the minimum that you need to do. And especially when you're starting out an experiment, you're trying to like figure out how to how this experiment works, kind of get a general idea of things. You really don't want to try to do too many samples because if it doesn't work, then you just wasted a lot of time and resources. And it takes a lot of time and resources to set up all those samples. So it's better to do things in triplicate and just triplicate, um, but include all those necessary controls in triplicate as well.